Hi, this is Scott Richardson, the bench doctor from the Liberal Gun Club. And uh, I thought I'd start a s series of um, videos to perhaps kind of conserve or uh, semi-restore this old Colt police positive. As you can see, there's virtually no bluing left on this thing. The grips are chipped right here. Uh, the bore is pretty crusty inside. The rifling is good, but there's looks like a lot of lead buildup. And, uh, you know, it, it works. It's functional. Uh, there is, of course, no ammo in the gun, as evidenced by this. But, you know, double action, single action, it works. The gun functions. Uh, so I thought, well, and police positives aren't really sought after collector's items. They're pretty common, pretty inexpensive. Um, but they're neat guns, and they have their place in history. Um, so, you know, it's kind of a fun project. Uh, it's a good candidate for sort of a semi-restoration. On a lot of old antique guns, you're, you're better off to just leave it as it is, keep it lubricated, keep it clean, and just run it. Um, a lot of collectors do not want restored guns. So uh, I would say tread carefully if you're going to do something like this. This is a perfect candidate, an old Ivers and Johnson or Harrison Richardson, something like that, um, are really good candidates for this stuff because, um, you know, nobody, they're not worth a lot of money. You're not going to devalue the thing. You know, if this was a rarer Colt uh, or something very special, uh, I wouldn't bother with it, uh, with restoring it. I would just try to conserve it as much as I could. But being a police positive, very common gun, nobody really wants them. Uh, I figured, what the heck, I could maybe um, learn some stuff and help uh, pass on the knowledge. So I got this at an auction, an online auction through Proxy Bid, and uh, I paid around $100 for it. And um, because I, I know these guns fairly well, I, and I, at functioning, I'm, I'm really happy to get it for that price because you know, you can still get all the parts for it, but all the lock work needs to be hand fitted as well as the cylinder. And so, you know, if all these pieces are here and working, then it's, it's a really good candidate. Now, if I had to go in here and fit a new hand or a new hammer or something like that, that's, that's a different story. It's probably not worth the money to put into fixing it. Um, so I figured, what the heck? So what I want to do is I'm going to, first of all, take this gun apart, and I'm going to show you what I do in these situations. Um, I'm going to disassemble it, and uh, then I'm going to boil it just to see, um, you know, rust blowing wise uh, how much of this original finish will come back. And if it's still blotchy and spotty and, and crappy like this, then I'm going to go ahead and sand it down and prep it for rust blowing and then i will show you guys these you know uh, i'll show everybody the steps to rust blowing something like this and all of the little pieces and parts and then uh you know we'll we'll restore it i'll see if i can find i'm pretty sure i can find some original grips and uh reassemble the gun and see what we end up with as far as um it won't be a perfect deep blue plum colored bluing and um you know it, it but it will be a good solid gun and it will uh keep it functioning for another hundred years so uh you, and you can see there's a little bit of pitting i don't know if it's going to show up on the camera but you know there's a little bit of pitting right here so I'd like to try to remove that if I can, but where you have to be careful is you see the Colt stamp right here. Um, let's see if I can get that up close, but right here is the, the prancing horse Colt stamp, and I want to keep that as much as I can. I do not want to sand that off. And then I have the original roll marks up here, Police Positive, 38 Special, um, you have the serial numbers, right? Uh, oops, not on this gun. The serial numbers are uh, inside right here. There's a serial number and, uh, you know, some other stamps. So I really want to be careful to keep these edges nice and crisp. I don't want to round them off by sanding on them too much. So I have to pay very special attention on how I do that as well as when you sand something like this, you want to keep it very flat to 
prevent these edges along here from rounding off. You don't want it to look like it was sanded and re-blued. Now, people are going to know it's re-blued, but I, I want to keep it as original as I possibly can. So that's the goal for this uh, series of videos. I hope it turns out well. I'm either going to um, do this gun a big favor or embarrass myself. But either way, it'll be a fun journey. Thanks for joining me.